So I'll be doing the first talk on do Android devs dream of electric espresso. So first of all, who am I? That's me. Yep, that's me. I'm really good at these, talk, these presentations where I have to describe myself. No, I'm not. Um, so I'm an Android engineer at The Telegraph. Uh, I started in December. We're working on a new project at the moment, um, which is quite an interesting thing to step into. Uh, I've worked for other stuff, doing imaging stuff, photography bits. Uh, here's a picture of a cat I found on Google. Uh, I actually once wrote a program to hide pictures of lines inside pictures of cats. And that was my MSc project. Uh, so random facts about me. Anyway, let's go on with the talk. Um, so I'm going to be talking about testing on Android. Um, you might have seen this structure before. It quite, quite comes up sometimes where I think Google are quite um, forward on the uh, trying to get a good ratio of the unit test, integration test, and end-to-end -end test. So we have the classic pyramid, testing pyramid where we deal with where we try and, sorry. Um, one minute. OK, so um, different kinds of tests for Android. Um, unit tests, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests. So most of our fundamental module bits and pieces, we deal with unit tests. It takes up a lot of most of our tests. Um, most of these tests can be run on a computer on the JVM. Um, then we compose these things together, want to run things on the Android platform, and therefore, when we do that, we have to then run things on a device, on a virtual device or a physical device. Don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's not no, that wasn't planned. Um, so uh, there are various tools for this. Um, RoboElectric and Makito are common tools for dealing with unit tests and running things on the JVM. Um, it's a way of mocking out things and but, um, simulating runs. And then we have Espresso and the Android testing support library, which allows us to run things on um, devices. So breaking those down a little bit, because there's obviously many. Um, so dealing with Android testing, we could use, there are different um, ways to do this. We could look at using Mokito to stub out mock interaction in the Android framework. Um, you might have used Mokito as a um, tool for unit testing, but you might also have used it to do this. Um, it's not usually advisable in the sense that views can have um, unusual complexities. You could be dealing with statefulness, um, like changes in, uh, yeah. Uh, changes in layout, um, various bits and pieces. Uh, and actually, as a result, by the time that you've mocked out your input, mocked out your output, you're not really testing anything. You're testing implementation details and not behavior. Um, so next, we have RoboElectric. Um, this shadows the Android behavior of objects, view inflation, resource loading in a much more practical way than Mokito. Uh, still works in the black box fashion, um, allows tests to focus more on behavior as a result. Uh, local testing is much faster and good for unit style tests. Uh, so it's a slightly better tool for trying to simulate uh, the Android behavior and handle that behind the scenes without having to do all of it manually yourself, but it's still not quite the same as using some of the tool like Espresso, which is a UI testing framework which runs things directly on um, devices. So this provides more realistic representation, which gives you more confidence in um, what your program is doing and that your tests are actually running. However, of course, as we all know, doing this, you go through a very slow process of having to build the APKs, run the tests, and by the time you actually find out whether your tests are working or not, um, it takes a lot longer to do so. So most of the tests um, you write for these frameworks tend to have the same generic format, which is the given when then um, structure. So last year at Google I.O., uh, Google then referred to what was known as a test writing crisis. There were many tools to do effectively the same kind of thing um, on different platforms but, and in different methods, but they're using different APIs. So if you have to, if you have new people coming into your system, you have to learn different notations to do the same thing. And it's, it's not ideal. So Android test library came, was announced and came out. It was part of the Jet, Jetpack. Um, set of libraries. This tried to try to find a way of unifying this experience so that 
you don't have to try and figure out which things you'll, you want to be using um, and on what platforms. So the Android test library contains um, the same test runners, test rules, test builders, well, test runners and rules that you might be used to from running things on um, Android devices uh, to get your contacts and stuff. Test builders are actually something new and I won't go into too much, but you might, rec you might recognize your usual um, rule to get the activity test rules, um, usual. Uh, uh, it contains core, um, core methods to application provider, which to get your contacts, activity scenarios and fragment, scenario, fragment scenarios are fairly new as well. Um, came out of the October release, I believe. Um, I will talk a little bit more about those later, but they deal with lifecycle handling um, aspects in a more efficient way. Uh, they've come up with a few more methods as well that are useful. Uh, you, so the get target context and the get context methods, one of which gets the context on the app under testing and one of which gets the context of um, from the actual test, test itself, um, have now been unified into, you can just use a get application context and it will figure out which one you need so that you don't end up with an error. Um, and of course, the Espresso API was introduced into the system. So the Android X um, testing framework now includes all the Espresso view matches, view actions, and intents, uh, which when, when a lot of people go to think about um, building UI tests for Android, uh, most people think of the Espresso APIs and that's what they're used to and that's what they like to use. So that was all built into the Android X stuff. Um, Android Truth was introduced as well as part of the Android test uh, as a way of providing fluent testing assertions, um, offering a reason, uh, readable assertions and clear failure messages. So when you have something like this, which is um, an older way of doing it, if your view is not visible, it will return a fun integer as your error. Um, anyone who might have uh, tried that before, which isn't particularly useful to someone who doesn't know what 16 is or what 12 is as a returned number. So that was cleaned up as well. We now have much cleaner assert that uh, view is visible methods that you don't have to implement yourself anymore. It's then clear as to what you're testing and if there's something wrong, it returns an appropriate message. So that's handy. Um, so the activity scenarios that I mentioned a bit earlier, these drive the lifecycle state for testing. These are quite useful if you want to test lifecycle changes, the created start to resumed states. Um, so here's an example of that, uh, launch an activity. You can then move to a state, uh, move between these states and then test whether the same thing still applies. Um, there are methods to recreate, delete, create, um, sorry, destroy, recreate, destroy, create, etc. I do similar things. The recreate will destroy an activity and then um, create the activity again. So if you have a state change that you want to test that text input is the same when you, um, under that state change that that's been preserved, then you can actually do it using the recreate methods. Um, th there's some cool stuff in it if you, uh, so the next thing in the, on that general journey is the project nitrogen stuff. Um, so going from this idea of unifying the test APIs into one super test API where you can run, um, run everything on the same, uh, with the same language, um, we have the introduction of Project Nitrogen, which allows us to, once we build those um, tests, to then deploy them on different um, environments. So rather than when you're locally developing, trying to deploy on Firebase Test Lab from your IDE or um, in RoboElectric, then, or, and then your CI server might be doing exactly the same thing in a slightly different way. Uh, Project Nitrogen it was is sort of in the process of being introduced to centralize this and take that complexity away. So this will be fully integrated into Android Studio. I think the ETL on this is at the end of quarter two, I'm not sure. I think it's already work on it being integrated into Firebase. There's some alphas out there, I haven't had a chance to play around with them. But it provides sort of deterministic behavior and is cross-platform. Um, yeah, build tools, runtime environments. Uh, so the Project Nitrogen stuff handles um, your setup, build scripts, etc., execution of the tests, orchestration, and reporting. It's a good way of unifying um, outputs, uh, screenshots, test um, runs, 
videos, uh, recording of various descriptions, um, which is kind of cool. So where does Roboelectric fit into this? Well, um, Roboelectric 4.0 was released in, again in October, around the same time that the Android test stuff went stable to 1.0. Um, I believe the team has been working quite closely together to try and unify some of their languages as well. So the Roboelectric 4.0 um, introduced the Espresso, well, it integrated the Espresso API for UI components, um, enabled the API support for the Android X and Android J unit runner, um, and other things, such things as improving the start time memory consumption when running tests, and it supports binary resources. So what this means, well, I can, sorry, wrong slide. Um, so this is not quite as fast as normal unit testing on the JVM, but it's much faster than testing on devices. Um, the current version of Overelectric is 4.2.1 if anyone's actually interested in using um, building into it, although as of four days ago, that's been updated. Um, so if I was just using Roboelectric as a, as a runner for Android testing, um, you get rapid feedback. Um, run more often, validate more often. So if you're trying to validate your UI test, you don't have to keep running them by device. You can get an earlier feedback from that by running them on the JVM effectively, um, much more reliably than you might have otherwise been able to do beforehand. Um, unified testing means unified code coverage and things like that, um, something that we found quite useful. Um, wider API range, so you might not have all of the testing devices or all of the virtual options available to you, um, and it allows you to simulate that on different options. Um, and you can use the same kinds of tests for execute. It came, same tests for different kinds of execution. So, okay, this means we can run Espresso APIs on the JVM with the, the JUnit runner, which means we can use exactly the same tests. In, on both cases. So Roboelectric or actual devices, same test, same language. Okay. So um, here at the Telegraph, we're working on a new version of the Digital Edition app, which means we can try some of the stuff out. Um, we've actually made an effort to try and use some of the Jetpack tools, um, view models, life cycles, live data, work manager, and Android test, to name a few. So yeah, let's try it. Um, so for the setup of trying to get to, of getting the Android test runner to work, um, we have to enable a few things. The um, test binary resources have to be set in the Gradle properties. This is currently experimental. This is a known warning. Um, the Gradle build needs to obviously include those resources, and the runner needs to still be set to the Android J unit runner, and obviously dependencies as well. Uh, Roboelectric runs the Android test test. So you have one test and two different ways to run it. Um, here's, here's going to be the optimistic point where I attempt to demonstrate this. I'm sure it's going to go very well. How do I enlarge this? <laughs> OK, so first of all, I've created a very, very, very basic app, which is basically very close to the original app. But in order to create the simplest espresso test I can possibly, no, ignore the tech title. Um, so here I have a single text view in the middle, and if I click it, it changes. So let's test that. Um, if I was always seeing the espresso test, it would probably look something-ish like this. Um, I have an assertion to check what the word is beforehand. I have a click action, and then I check that the word has changed. It's possibly one of the most simplest interactions I could come up with that actually uses an interaction with the UI. Um, so if we look at this, this is obviously using the Android Day Unit runner. All, all good with that. And is running from the Android test folder. So I should be able to just, I, did I just do that with debugging? Whoops. So should just run. Hopefully that will. Give it a second. Okay, so we've got something very basic that's passing as we would expect. 
Um, now, if we copy the exact same test into the test folder, under a slightly different class name, because otherwise Andrew Shishio hates you, um, we can then try and run this, see what happens. See, that doesn't need to be open anymore. OK, and that passes. So we've used exactly the same language in order to run the test in two different ways. So then we thought, well, OK, but we're not going to want to have two different test folders populated with two different, exactly the same tests. So we then thought, OK, how about we combine the test folders on build? No, we don't actually need this. Let's nuke it. OK, so we have one test, which is this one now. Uh, actually, let's just be really thorough. Let's entirely nuke it. Now you can see that's actually added it by default to the test folder, but these, 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 these test folders will show up only once. So now if, I, now if I run it from the IDE, it will attempt to try and run itself in the same usual way as an Android, um, in the Android test folder, um, which I probably don't need to demonstrate again. But if we try running from the command line as a, as a unit test, Waiting time. It passes. So it automatically picks up using the RoboElectric runner um, when you run it as a unit test, like within the test folder as opposed to the Android test folder, and executes it that way, um, which is really handy. So let's go into why that's handy. Oh, yeah, sorry, that's the bit I've just changed. Um, just adding it to the source directories. Anyway, magic. Um, CI workflows. So this has various advantages for CI. Um, you can use it to pre-check UI tests before any expensive device matrix executions. So if you wanted to run this as a precursor to running things on a physical device, say you're using Firebase test labs or something, devices are expensive, you might want to pre-check it, um, sanity check the uh, tests before they get picked up by sent to Firebase. Um, you can run different tests during different stages of the development cycle. So if I wanted to say every time I push code um, to GitHub, uh, I wanted it to run, do a quick sweep on UI tests, but I don't want to wait around for ages for those UI tests to um, let me know if there's anything, any problems with them um, or um, be particularly costly uh, running them on a device matrix, then I can do it that way and then check, check, on a, check whether they pass physical devices at key points during my development cycle when I want to merge code, say, or open a pull request. Uh, different runtime environments can run the same tests in parallel, which is actually the way we do it at the moment. We have two different workflows. We can run the UI test. We send the UI test suites to Firebase. We also run the UI test suites on um, RCI. And we can obviously find out quite quickly if our, our UI tests are broken. Um, and it's, it's obviously faster than running things on a, on a device. So what else are we doing? OK, well, we decided to try out the motion layouts and motion scenes, being the crazy people we are. Yay, let's use all the new Android things. Um, which have been pretty good. The motion scenes define, um, basically motion layouts are like constraint layouts that, if you've ever used constraint sets, um, define that in using an XML um, file instead. And gives you a bunch of stuff like key positions, key attributes, so you can define partial transition, things that happen during transitions. We have a lot of things that move in our, in our app redesign, so we thought this would be a good way to handle, handle that. Um, except for we had a few problems when we tried to run this with RoboElectric. Um, 
we had an issue with Robo-Electric not inflating certain elements that were wrapped. And this is a problem of constraint layout um, because of the order of the way that things are inflated. And we had a bit of a workaround, which was you have to kind of set in a minimum height and width to pre-inflate the thing. Um, otherwise, if you call a click on it, it doesn't, it doesn't see it because it just, just thinks that the uh, um, dimensions of it are zero, zero, click doesn't work. Um, so the espresso test would pass, the robo-electric test doesn't pass. So I think it's still something in a work in progress. Um, motion scene changes are not rendering properly all the time for robo-electric. There are views that are visible and are inflating, but not displayed to the user. So again, when you're trying to perform interactions, um, we're trying to find a good workaround for this one at the moment. And ideally, you don't want to have to find workarounds. Long, the long-term goal would be, obviously, your, uh, not, not your usual espresso test should just work on, work on this. Um, but for now, we've actually had to set up a skip annotation for CI in order to circumvent this problem, which we've called the RoboElectric Espresso Flaky Test. So we can run these tests on our um, Firebase test suites, but we don't run these tests on CI at the moment. This has the disadvantage that these then aren't covered by our CI code co initial code coverage metrics. Um, our long-term goal is to try and get every, all of our UI tests co uh, covered in the same, um, same sweep. Um, another problem we had early on was CI memory issues when trying to execute too many API runs. So we were trying to run multiple build flavors, multiple API and multiple API levels, and one in four CI runs would crash um, and run out of memory. So we had various options for this. We, had, we could either cap the CI workers, um, which I think we did initially, just so we could run things. Uh, this is obviously a bit slower. Uh, you don't have as many resources running at the same time. Uh, you can increase the memory, um, which might require an upgrade to CI. Or you can use fewer Android versions, which means you have less version coverage. Um, I think we're just testing one build flavor at the moment and two Android versions using this method. And, Hopefully we can play around and increase it, but it's only sanity check, um, testing for us at the moment. So we just need a high and a low um, and let Firebase hopefully catch anything um, big when that gets hit. Um, there's a little bit of a lack of documentation at the moment. There are um, documents and stuff out there for the actual libraries, but it's all very new and therefore you don't see a lot of people doing um, stuff in it. There's a couple of good Medium articles and bits and pieces. Um, but in terms of troubleshooting, it's a lot harder to do. Um, so yeah, I guess what I actually mean is uh, troubleshooting. <laughs> There's a lack of troubleshooting options. So what's the, what's the answer to this? Well, apparently just host talk and encourage more people to use it. Uh, yeah, so going forward, we have... Um, Project Nitrogen, something else I want to play around with a little bit more. Realistically, once it's introduced into Android Studio, that's the point where I'll have a look at whether it's worth introducing to RCI workflows. Um, but, you know, it's exciting work. More unification of this stuff makes it much easier and more autonomous for developers, um, by which I mean we can be lazy. Uh, unification is useful for similar reasons. Um, again, writing one test, being able to run one test in many, many places, it's the right one to run everywhere um, saying that keeps being thrown around. And um, there are a lot of new additions to the Android tests, which we have not even started to dig into enough, I don't think, to really capture all the, all the cool stuff that's been added. Um, but as I say, a lot of this is fairly new. There was a Dev Summit end of last year that covered a few more bits to play around with. And we've only really been able to have an opportunity to do this um, in a product, well, not in production, but in a um, app because we've started something new and fresh. Um, so yeah, uh, that's more or less the end of my talk. Um, we have an engineering blog here at The Telegraph if anyone wants to visit it. Those are my contact details. Um, I'm probably running slightly quickly on time. Um, do I have much time left? I do have plenty of time left. So one thing I could show you very quickly is this little example. So this, I could actually show you the, the thing not working. It's actually kind of working in the, in the correct way around you'd expect it to, because um, if, you, if you have difficulties with a, if a RoboElectric test not passing and the espresso test passing, that's sort of a better way around than 
less than a year, mobile electric tests pass, and then having to wait and find out much later on that your UI test is not passing with Espresso, um, with the on device. Um, so this, this is the very, very, very basic text view. Um, so here, you can see I've actually had to implement this in this case as well because um, I've used the wrap content around the text um, to deal with the inflation. I've had to include the min width and min height. So if I run this test, um, just check it again on device. Let's do that. And then I'll run it without those constraints on, actually, I should run it without those constraints. Everything's so small. Let's make it a bit bigger. So let's take that out. We can we can see one of these issues in practice. So this test should pass. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It's running. Yep, there we go. It's passed. Um, it goes very quickly. Um, so there we go. The 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 test passed there. Um, happy as it was. If I go back to, so I've now got it running off the Android test folder and I've deleted the other test. Um, if I then try and run the test using RoboElectric. Waiting time. Right. Build fails. What's going on? Nope. Okay, there we go. Test fails. So this is the issue I was talking about before, ever performing the single click on the view. Um, this is because, there we go. Um, yeah, it doesn't see it with a width and a height. Um, so unfortunately, it, yeah, doesn't, it doesn't pass. So we've had to be very careful with the way we write our tests with these bits and pieces. If we find something doesn't work, we try and find an alternative way to test it, which is not really the direction we want to go in. Um, but these tools are still early, early days. So um, I think hopefully the long-term goal is to be able to make that natural progression to being able to run things on every single platform in with the same language. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope some of that was interesting. <laughs>